So continuing 12.7 here, let's try to finish this up. Uh, we'll start with some examples of normal distribution. And basically here it says you have a survey and that shows that the time spent by shoppers in a supermarket is normally distributed with a mean of 45 minutes and a standard deviation of 12. Mean meaning, right, mean meaning the middle. So this is 45 right here in the middle and then it's saying a standard deviation of 12 minutes. That means I'm going up by 12. So 45 plus 12, that's 57. On this direction, one standard deviation away is 45 minus 12, which is 33. I go up two standard deviations, which means I add another 12 in this direction to go up another standard deviation to 69. And I subtract another standard deviation this way, and up to 21. And I go another standard deviation up so I can add 12 to this side and go to 81. And I can subtract 12 on this side to take that standard deviation to 9. After I have all this in, it says, what percent of the shoppers at a supermarket will spend between 33 and 57 minutes in the supermarket? In between, here's 33 and 57. Here it is. Well, we just talked. If you use your graph, that's all you need to do. Look at your bell curve there. Look at it and see what percentage would lie in between those two points. In between 33 and 57 is 34 and 34, which is 68%. What is the probability that a randomly chosen shopper will spend between 45, so here's 45, between 45 minutes and 69 minutes? Well, we bracketed that off so you know what the percentages are. In 45, this section right here, this one standard deviation is 34, and this one down here is 13.5, so you add those two together to end up with 47.5%. Basically, that's as simple as this stuff is, filling it in. Example two, according to a survey by the National Center of Health Statistics, the heights of adult men in the U.S. are normally distributed with a mean of 69, and a standard deviation of 2.75. So, 69 in the middle, add 2.75, keep going up, subtract 2.75, keep going down. There it is, all filled in. It says, if you uh, randomly chose three adult men, what's the probability that all three are? 71.25 inches or taller. 71.25 or taller means I want this percent in here, this percent in here, this percent in here. So I add all those up to get 16%. So normal approximation, this is how you actually find um, the mean. And you find the mean by doing N and P. And what that means is the number of trials times the probability of success. That gives you the mean the number of trials that you did times the probability of success. To find the standard deviation, you use the mean or you use the number of trials times the probability of success at times 1 minus the probability of success all square rooted. That'll give you the standard deviation. So when we're looking at this example, it says according to a survey conducted by the Harris Poll, 29% of adults in the U.S. say that they or someone in their family plays soccer regularly. You are conducting a random survey of 238 adults. What's the probability you will find at most 55 adults who come from a family in which someone plays soccer? First, we need to find n. n is 238 because that's the number of people who participated in the poll. p is the percentage, which is 29%, so we write that as 0.29. So to find the mean, I take the two and multiply them together to get a roughly 69 is the mean. To find the standard deviation, I take n, which is 238, times p, which is 0.29, times 1 minus p, which is 0.29. So I end up with 238 times 0.29 times 0.71, which gives me uh, roughly 7. So I have 69 as my middle, right, and the mean is 7. So what that means is I'll keep adding 7 up that direction, and I'll subtract 7 down that way. It says, what is the probability that you will find at most, so the highest amount, at most 55 adults? So at most means I want this section and I want this section. I don't want anything higher than that. So the probability that the most people from a family in which uh, someone plays soccer, that would be 2.5%. So there is your homework. If you have any questions or concerns on this, which I don't think you probably will in this section. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. As long as you remember the curve and what percentages go where, you should be good in this section. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, and I will talk with you later.